Hey guys, it's David from mdbootstrap.com. Welcome to episode 3 of our tutorial series on how to build admin dashboard. In the previous tutorials, we learned how to build other dashboards showing our website traffic. And in this tutorial, and the last one from the series, we're gonna focus on a data table component, which allows us to present our data interactive way. If you haven't seen the previous one, I strongly encourage you to check our channel. Uh, you're also gonna find our other tutorials on how to build portfolio page, blogs, and many, many others. So take a moment and have a look at our other videos. And now without further ado, let's get started. As always, in order to start the project, we have to get MDB. So navigate to mdbootstrap.com, go to your orders page and download the latest MDB5 or if you are MDB CLI user, you can just type MDB init in your terminal, search for MDB5 and hit enter. Your project will be initialized. We just need to change the name. If you don't know what MDB CLI is, please check the description down below. You're gonna find the link to the tutorial uh, on how to install, how to use it. Uh, so you're gonna find all the required information over there. So let's change the name. Let's open it in Visual Studio Code. And let's get started. First, we're gonna start with our navigation. So let's navigate to uh, MDB5 docs you're gonna find it over here by clicking this bootstrap icon and go to side nav section we're gonna go to mdb navigation so the one which we are using here you can check the uh, preview over here so this is exactly what we're gonna use in the previous tutorials we learned how to build this setup from scratch so if you want to learn how to do that i strongly encourage you uh, to check previous tutorials. Now I'm just going to copy and reuse existing code. So I'm going to get rid of this. Uh, oh, let's open this in live studio. So this is our starting point and let's get rid of this. Let's paste our code and let's add remaining JavaScript. I'm going to keep everything with a single file. Uh, so that's going to be easier for you to understand. Um, obviously, in normal project, we would split it and keep it in a separate files. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to keep it all together here. So you can see this on the one screen, everything without switching the files. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, now our navigation is ready. So we can move to the next step. Now let's add a heading to our page. So let's find main section. So we have a container over here. And inside that container, I'm going to add h1, which looks like h4 is centered and has some paddings as well as margins. And let's say order dashboard. Now yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, it's it's fine. Now let's add cart and cart body inside that, which will create a cart for us. Now let's also add some grayish background to body. So we have a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to do it inline. Obviously, we could use a class over here. Uh, but just for the sake of simplicity of this tutorial, I'm just going to do it like this. Oops, too much. So now we have this nice contrast between our card and the background. Now it's a high time to use our data table component. So um, let's, let's get back to docs. Let's go to data tables. And here, as always, you can see many different examples, uh, which also I'm going to show you in a second. We also have a nice um, generator builder for this one, which allows you to design your table as you like. But let's start with a basic example. So I'm going to copy basic example from uh, documentation and I'm going to paste it into our card. 
Let's see how it looks now. Yeah, so this is our uh, this is our table. It's already working. It's sorting. We don't have pagination yet because we have not enough data. So let me quickly duplicate some data over here. So now we have more. So we can see that pagination also works. Also, you can decide how many rows you want to see in the single page. So everything works out of the box. Now, in this example, we are passing data directly to HTML using attributes. But uh, when it comes to data, it's much more convenient to uh, modify them using JavaScript. So let's have a look at this example. Let's search for... Uh, let's search for basic data structure. And here you can see that our HTML part is just a single div and entire data are manipulated by JavaScript. So let's use this example now. So I'm going to get rid of this data table and I'm going to replace it with this D with this div and add JavaScript here. So let me add separate tag for that. Obviously it isn't required, but it's going to be more readable. And now let's have a look. And as you can see, that works exactly the same way as it used when we were using HTML markups. Now let's add to our table search form, which allows us to search data within a table. So I'm going to add card header here. So this is where we're going to add our search box. And from search example, we're going to copy a piece of HTML and paste it into our code. Let's change this to my3. So we want to have margin in both direction. And let's have a look. So we have search over there, but obviously it doesn't work yet because we didn't take care of our JavaScript part. In order to make it working, we need this piece of code. As you can see, we I'm not copying this because this is data, which we already have. So I just need this part and let's go to our JavaScript. Let's replace this line of code because this is one which initialize our table. So this is the one which draw. So if I would do it like this, we would have two uh, instances of data table. We want, we need just one. So I'm going to get rid of this one and let's check whether it works. Now, as you can see, it doesn't work as expected. So let's check our console and we can see error saying that data is not defined. So let's have a look at our code. And we can see that data, which we are passing here, doesn't exist because we call that a basic data. So once we update this and provide a correct object, everything works like a charm. And we can now search within our table. Now let's get back to our builder, which I showed you before. And uh, this tool allows you to design your table the way you like it with different options. So uh, let me restore all the default settings and we're gonna have, uh, let's say, striped, bordered, uh, let's say select table and maybe multi-select. So once you choose all the options, you're gonna find all the settings down below. And as I said before, you can set all the settings in data tables, either using JavaScript or using data attributes. So we're going to use a JavaScript. So I'm going to copy all the settings and add them to our code. And now 
as you can see, our table become select table, bordered, and allows us to check multiple rows at the same time. Now to make it look even more realistic, we can generate some data. You can use pages like generatedata.com, which allows you to generate sample data. This might be a very interesting tool for you for future. Uh, I did it before this tutorial, so let me just uh, quickly copy paste uh, sample data, which I generated before to present you how powerful this tool can be. And obviously we could keep these options as a separate object like uh, const options. And then pass it to our function. And let me replace basic data. And let's have a look at our table now. So as you can see, options are working. And now we have some sample data over here. Our table is filled with a lot of different data. So now you can imitate a real project. Now let's add some charts to our dashboard. So I'm going to wrap it up with a section. So this is our data table section. And I'm going to create a new section for our charts. And let's add some, some margins to our sections. Let's call, let's give some comments here. So this is data table section. And this is our charts section. And within this section, let's add row and two columns. Let's also add card, card body. So we're going to keep our read our charts inside a new card here. And now let me add some charts here. We already learned how to use charts in a previous tutorial. So let me just quickly redo that. So I'm going to charts. Let's uh, get uh, this one line ch chart. I'm going to add it here to the first and let's have some bar chart to show let's say number of orders let's change this to sales and this to orders okay our page is ready i can quickly uh, adjust data we have um, one which I prepared before, so it will show more realistic data. Yeah. And now our project is ready. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find uh, using uh, our components like data table very easy. Uh, I strongly encourage you to play with, um, with it to build something, to try something, other options. Uh, what you could do, you could try to combine the data from uh, from a table with these charts, right? So every time we change something here, uh, our charts gets updated. So there are plenty of possibilities to build uh, different dashboards, uh, but I'm pretty sure that regardless of what you want to build, MDB will just make it easier for you. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we are about to prepare next series on how to build e-commerce site using MDB. 
So if you don't want to miss that, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button so you get the notification every time a new tutorial is released. I also strongly encourage you to join our Facebook group. Uh, I strongly encourage you also to build your projects, share with us uh, and show to others what you've built with MDB. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.